Colin Nesbitt, he testified of this moment in Kauai, uh, Princeville, and this was on January 25th of 2020. He was given, they were assisting Rexburg police, I'll just play it for you, when Lori and Chad were chilling by the pool, and they got a document that would change their life. Do you have any questions regarding that? So it is 14.39 hours on January 25th. Any, any questions? You have any questions for that? No? Okay. okay. All right, have a nice day. Have a nice day. So, that's what happened at the Kauai Beach Resort. That document said she had to have her kids in Rexburg in five days before a judge or before the Department of Health and Welfare. The next day, Lori and Chad got in a car and drove, started to drive from where they were staying in their condo toward the airport. Now, I don't know if they had planned to, to take a trip, but police ended up ultimately stopping them. That's where Eric Grossarth and I met Chad and Lori for the first time. And this is the first photo I took there at the Kauai Beach Resort. These are the pictures that I, I don't think we've ever shown or released. We pulled into the beach resort. We kind of uh, stood back. And there's three police cars. I'll use my little drawer here to show you that here is the SUV parked under here. We were parked over here. The next photo is a close-up of the SUV that Chad and Lori were driving. So everything we heard tonight, or today in court, everything was seized from inside this rental car. This is the cops. The doors open. They were searching. Today in court, we saw some of the photos of what was inside. I'll go through that in just a moment. Here's Lori with the police, clearly annoyed. Um, they were talking to her. And then they put her in a police car. This is a photo I don't think I'll ever forget. This is Chad. Over here, not this car, but over here, there was another police car. You can kind of see it through the window where Lori was. She was in this police car back here. He was here. He was looking through this window. And at one point, he had his like hand up to the window. And it was like he was saying, I love you or I miss you. I want to be with you. I mean, he was clearly longing for her. They did not say anything to the police this day, by the way. They never did. Here's Lori. They're searching the car. You see this bag right here? This is some of the stuff they seized. And it looks like there's phones. Well, I don't know what exactly is in there. She's looking at them. This officer's filming, of course. Um, the, the camera footage from the cops have been released. We've aired it before we've shown it to you then they took the car on this um uh this tow truck and they took it over and then the police did a thorough search over at uh, their facility i believe he said the next day the next morning there's another angle of the car and inside the car here we go there was a purse tylee's cell phone two bikes a backpack the visions of glory book envelopes, JJ's iPad, another iPad, 17, yes, 17 death certificates, 
from Charles Vallow. His death certificate was in the car. Real estate paper for the place where they were renting the condo. Social security card, JJ's birth certificate, a page with blue sticky notes. $10,500 in cash, U.S. money in an envelope, a MacBook Pro, an HP laptop, that patriarchal blessing for Alex that Chad gave. We talked about that earlier. And social security cards for JJ and Tylee. I think I got it all. I think there was a lot more in there, to be honest with you. There was a lot. And the police seized it. So... I'll tell you a little bit about what was happening behind the scenes. Um, I, uh, here's one second. Eric and I were there at that resort and we saw Lori and Chad's car get taken. And then we saw the police try to attempt to talk to them. And um, they weren't talking to the officers. They were just standing there. And um, then they let them out of the car. They're police cars. As I said, they were both in separate police cars. So I said to one of the officers, I said, I'd love to interview them. I'd love to talk to them. And they said, okay. I said, well, can I? They said, well, I don't know. We're seizing the car and we're not arresting them today. They've got five days to get those children in Rexburg. And we're also serving a search warrant on their condo. I said, so wait a sec. They're going to take their car. And what are Chad and Lori going to do? And to set the stage, we were at the back of a large parking lot. Like we were kind of by the road. Not really by the road, but it's kind of hard to explain. It's not like we were in a front parking lot of a hotel that you just walk into. We were at the back and you'd really have to walk a long ways to get into the hotel. So I'm sitting there thinking, um, well, they're not going to have a car. If they call a taxi or an Uber, it's, they're going to have to wait. Maybe they'll sit down and talk to me. Wouldn't that be amazing if I walked up and I said, hey, I'm with East Idaho News. And they said, yeah, let's do an interview right now. Even if it was like off the record, even if it was not on camera. But I, I had a feeling we needed to roll on the camera because um, – just in case they didn't talk. And sure enough, they didn't. And I apologize. I know you've seen this video a, a lot. Maybe I have. But this shows what was happening after exactly uh, what the detective testified on today there in Kauai. I'm going to play the question video again for that I did with them. And I, I want you to note, I think we got a shot of the money Eric was working the camera. He did a phenomenal job because Lori and Chad were walking so fast. We had no idea where they were going. And I had to focus on them. And the police were probably wonder, watching us from a distance, wondering what was going on. Um, but this is, this, is the, this is the moment for me that really uh, changed. So here you go. News.com in Kauai, where Chad and Lori Daybell were served with two search warrants just hours ago. Law enforcement officers from eastern Idaho, along with federal agents and the Kauai Police Department, pulled Lori and Chad over. They were driving a black SUV. They pulled into this resort where I am standing. They put Chad into one vehicle, Lori into another. That's when their vehicle was seized and they had no way to get home. We had a chance to ask them so many questions that need answers. Lori, Nate Eaton with East Idaho News. Can you tell me where your kids are? Where are your kids? No comment. No comment? They've been missing for four months. You have nothing to say? You're over here in Hawaii? Where are your children? Yeah, why don't you just give us a comment? Just tell us where they are. Chad, where are Lori's kids? What happened to Tammy, Chad? Can you tell us what happened to Tammy? Why have you guys been in Hawaii for so long? Listen, just tell people what's happening. There's people around the country praying for your children, praying for you guys. Why don't you give us answers? That's great. That's great. That's great that they're praying for you, praying for your kids, what? You have nothing to say? Did you do something to your children? Are your children still alive? 
That's a simple question. I've got three kids of my own. I can tell you every minute where my kids are at. Where are your children? What do you guys plan to do now? Are you going to, you have five days to get your children in front of a judge in Rexburg, then what? Are you guys innocent of any crimes? Have you committed any crimes? Chad, you guys have a lot to say on your podcast. You don't have anything to say now? Lori? Do you believe that you were instructed by God or others to do something for your children? If you could give a message to them, what would you say? Listen, if you just talk to us, we'll leave you alone. The family's worried. Tammy's family's very worried. Tammy's family's very worried. Lori, uh, your, your mother, Kay, came out. Kay and Larry, they're offering a $20,000 reward for your children. And you're over here on the beach. This is your chance to tell your story. Nothing you want to say? One last chance right here? Anything you want to say to the people in Idaho? Laura, you have a lot of cash there in your, in your baggie. Were you guys planning to leave Hawaii? Were you planning to take off? And with that, Chad and Lori darted into this resort and they still have not come out. Now, police have not said what they are searching for in that SUV or in their home. But one thing that was not found is Lori's children. JJ and Tylee are still missing. Tomorrow, we will have much more from Hawaii. For now, I'm Nate Eaton reporting for EastIdahoNews.com. So um, I obviously had Kay and Larry confused with Lori's parents, that's what happens, you know, in the heat of the moment, all the names were jumbling through my mind. We waited in the lobby of that hotel for about an hour, maybe 40, 30 minutes. Um, Dateline was there with us and we were hoping they'd come out. And then we went back to our, where we were staying and the internet was so slow. I edited the video, Eric, who I was with. So they did the warrant there and then they were up at the house serving the warrant on the house. So I asked Eric to go to the house to get video of them serving the warrant at the townhome. There really wasn't much there. The, the detective testified to that today. They got a couple of wedding rings, but that was it. So Eric went up there while I went to the house to edit the video and, and the internet took forever to upload. Like I, when I say forever, I mean like two hours. I, it, was, it was a disaster and uh, the prosecutor, Rob Wood, put out a news release that this warrant had been served on them so all my friends are texting like did you see the latest on chad and Lori?" and i'm like yes i'm in hawaii trying to get this video out we put it up and then erica eric and i went to a, a got a hamburger a burger it was dark at this point and went back went to sleep and the next day when i woke up i was still on mountain time i woke up like at four i had like I don't even remember how many emails from people, Facebook messages, like it blew up overnight. Good morning, America, the call. They're like, we're on our way to Hawaii. We want to, you know, team up with you. And I was, we were already working with Dateline and Nancy Grace called, um, Dr. Oz, Dr. Phil, all these people had called their show saying, we want to, we want to do something with you. Um, and the next two days were just, we, we were there like three days and, and the next two days we were trying to find Chad and Lori again. We went and staked out their house, that condo. Uh, we, we found out, we found out later they stayed there at that resort and then they moved to another resort. And um, we, were, we were trying to kind of track them again and then I was thinking if we see them again, do I approach them again? Probably not. We were trying to come up with a different strategy. Of what do we do? You know, do we lay back, lay low? Anyway, um, Dateline ended up, so the last night we were there, I hadn't had planned to talk about all this, I hope you don't mind. The last night we were there, we'd gone around, we'd interviewed people, it was time for us to come home, we're packing up, it's like 5 o'clock at night, we were taking the red eye back to Idaho. We get a call in, at our newsroom in Idaho Falls from someone who worked at a resort in Hawaii, another part of the island, and they said that Chad and Lori had just checked into the Marriott down on another part of the island and they saw plane tickets sticking out of the their bag and all they saw on the destination was m a and so 
we're like, well, shoot, do we go down to the that resort and wait, stake it out? We had to catch a flight. So we told Dateline, who was there working with us, they sent producers down to the resort and they staked out every door. And turns out, remember how a couple days later, Chad and Lori flew to Maui? That's probably what those tickets were. But but you never know. We they could have been like Mazatlan in Mexico or something. They, it could have been anywhere. But the next day, after these producers like waited all night at these doors, Chad and Lori came out. And there's the video you may have seen on Dateline where the he the the uh, producer Dave Ketterling is his name. He walks up to Chad and Lori. He's got a little like GoPro, like a tiny camera, and he's like, "Hey, Chad and Lori, can you just tell us where the kids are?" And Chad and Lori were on their way to the beach, and they were annoyed that Dateline ruined their trip to the beach. So go figure. 